Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church in Kansas City. Deacon Donna and the entire congregation and I are delighted to worship with you today. There's a bulletin for this service online. A link to it can be found in the description section of the YouTube video that you might have just clicked on or in an email from the church. If you're not receiving emails from the church but would like to, uh, please send a message to office at stpaas.org, office at stpaas.org. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace, truth to all earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. be with you and also with you let us pray give us grace O Lord to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen A reading from Nehemiah. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord our, your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. 
for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The psalm for today is Psalm 19. Let us read it together. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of its chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. A reading from 1 Corinthians Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, 
forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Julius Henry Marx, better known as Groucho, who was born at a very early age, sent a telegram to the Friars Club in Beverly Hills, saying, Please accept my resignation. I don't want to belong to any club that will accept people like me as a member. The fact is, we all want to be part of something greater than ourselves. Perhaps Mother Nature just wants every individual human to contribute to the survival of the species, or perhaps, and I think it more likely, we are hardwired to find meaning in life which is part of being made in the image of God. And it is an interesting thing that an individual can find meaning in his or her life by being connected to many people. Personally, I can think of hardly any way in which I, by myself, generate meaning for myself. But my connection to others does generate meaning. There is a poignant movie called The Family Man, about 21 years old, starring Nicolas Cage, whose character was a fast lane investment broker who, offered the opportunity to see how others live, wakes up to find that his sports car and girlfriend have become a minivan and wife. He finds deep meaning in his new relationships. It is one of my family's favorites because two years before that movie, I married a widow and adopted her children, which my father described as an instant family which happens to be the name of another movie. Contrast what the poet W. H. Auden said with what St. Paul said. Auden, we are all here on earth to help others. What on earth the others are here for, I don't know. And St. Paul, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. Paul also said, as we heard a few minutes ago, In the Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. You are the body of Christ and individually members of it. 
He even said, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. This is Christ's body, the church, and we are all the members of it, hands and feet, eyes and ears, appendix, gallbladder, and pinky toe. Christ's body, the church, is spread out all over the world, across millennia of time, and each of us is a member. How grand is that? We are the church, worshiping God in community, praying for those in need, being spiritually fed for the week ahead, and dismissed from corporate worship to be the hands and feet of Christ to a world in need. The church's mission is worked out through the body's unique parts. Paul said that we have gifts that deliver, excuse me, that differ according to the grace given to us. And he asked, are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles, possess gifts of healing, speak in tongues, interpret? Each of us was given a gift to accomplish the mission that we share. Last week, we looked at specific ways we've been accomplishing the mission and the ways we can do so throughout this year ahead, as we read in the annual report and mission plan and budget. We took care of some church business, but it was so much more than a business meeting. We are part of something greater than ourselves that will continue throughout our lives, through generations and millennia. Who wouldn't want to be part of that? The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and, and for our salvation, salvation he, he came down, down from heaven. heaven. By, By the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and, and the, the life, life of the, of the world, world to come. To come. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Diane, our bishop provisional, 
and our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, and our parish staff. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those affected by the recent tornadoes, the wildfires, and by the coronavirus. Ed Dwyer, Dorothy Gregory, Susan Rose, John Thompson, and also Catherine Allberg, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Craig Cartwright, Kathleen Clark, Lisa Cole, Alan and Christy Aiken and family, Kevin Feingold, Alex and Susan Green, Jennifer Brown Harnick, Betty Lockhart Hayes, Jim, Ed and Blair Joyner Jr., Charles and Karen Joyner, Michael and Martha Kelly, Glenn and Ruby Lane, Susan Malone, Jeannie McDowell, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bob Knoll, Gary Oda, Rosemary Overby, Pam, Lawrence Presley, Rob, Tom Carley and Theo Roberton, Dick Strong, Carolyn Watson, Don and Donna White, the Reverend Stephen Wilson, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Gabriella Cusco, Rob Murphy, and Daryl Penland. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those serving in the military and their families, especially Loyal Otterson, Alex Battle, Tanner Bosch, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, Brendan Frederick, Tom Gildea, Ryan Kelly, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Lucy Nix, Sean Perone, Samantha and Clint Hubbard, Dan Sanford, Hunter Soul. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. 
Thanks be to God.